It is a great pleasure to participate in this unique event today to speak on behalf of Nigeria and what I believe is very important to our economic agenda. We are well aligned with the Big Five Digital Festival Africa event aim of highlighting ways to foster strategic partnership with other key markets in Africa to transform infrastructure and construction in Africa. I'll speak about the infrastructural needs in Africa with specific focus on Nigeria and ways in which we can collectively address the situation. Africa's infrastructural need offers good investment potentials and opportunities. The World Bank estimates that the global infrastructure gap will grow to 50 trillion US dollars by the year 2030. And in Africa, the infrastructure gap will grow by 133 billion US dollars annually. The Nigerian Infrastructure Master Plan estimates that Nigeria requires an estimated sum of 3 trillion US dollars to upscale its national infrastructure over the next 30 years. This amounts roughly to 100, US, 100 billion US dollars annually. Uh, Nigeria's infrastructural gap offers unique investment opportunities. Relatively, Nigeria lags behind the BRICS economies. In closing the gap with Brazil, for instance, Nigeria would require approximately an investment of about $190 billion, which is currently estimated at 43% of the current GDP figures. Uh, and that was, uh, as at 2019, that's uh, $446 billion. A significant portion of these investments would be required to finance the gaps in the power, gas, rail, and road infrastructure, amongst others. To provide additional context, investment opportunities exist within the following areas. In the power area, according to power specialists, the rule of thumb for any developed nation is that at least one gigawatt, equivalent to 1,000 megawatts of electricity generation and consumption, is required for every 1 million head of population. Currently, the power holding company of Nigeria, PHCN, generates and supplies 4,000 megawatts out of its installed capacity of 10,396 megawatts. Based on the units currently supplied and growing population of over 200 million, this suggests an indicative power supply gap of over 200 gigawatts. Uh, transportation, in transportation, uh, according to our Infrastructure Concession Regulatory Commission, ICRC, Nigeria currently has 195,000 kilometers of road network and only about 60,000 kilometers of this road network is paved, leaving 135,000 kilometers of roads on tarred to meet the demand of a growing population. Relative to South Africa, which possesses a 35,500 kilometer rail network with a population of about 59 million people, Nigeria possesses a rail network of about 4,000 kilometers, uh, 3,500 kilometers in narrow gauge, and 500 kilometers in standard gauge. Refineries. As you may already know, Nigeria has four refineries wholly owned by the Nigeria National Petroleum Corporation, the NNPC. Two of these are situated in Port Harcourt, and the other two are situated in Wari and Kaduna. These refineries have a combined nameplate capacity of 445,000 barrels per day, and currently work at about 30% of their installed capacity, thus necessitating the importation of refined products to meet growing local demand. In order to address this, the Dangote Group is currently constructing a refinery with an installed capacity of 650,000 barrels per day. Upon completion in the year 2021, the refinery is expected to produce Euro V quality gasoline and diesel, as well as jet fuel and polypropylene to tackle the oil importation issue and to ease the burden on Nigeria's foreign reserve. This project is also expected to generate 4,000 direct and 145,000 indirect jobs upon commencement of operations in the year 2021. Nigeria's infrastructural gap offers unique investment opportunities. To proceed further, it is worth stating that Nigeria has a total of 53 ongoing infrastructural projects, approaching financial closure phase with an estimated total investment 
of 12 billion US dollars. A significant portion of these investments is import development, accounting for almost 60% of total investment to reduce congestion and traffic gridlock at their proper ports in Lagos. The congestion is inevitable as the handling capacity of ports in Nigeria is estimated at 60 million metric tons, while demand and usage is about 100 million metric tons. It has also been projected that the demand and usage in Nigeria is expected to grow by 12.9 at 12.9% 12 by 2025. The 1.65 billion uh, dollar deep sea port currently being constructed by Lekki Port Enterprises Limited, a subsidiary of the Tolera Group, is expected to commence operations by 2022. This project marks the commitment of the federal government of Nigeria to drive economic growth as it is expected to create 163,000 new jobs and contribute more than 200 billion US dollars to the economy. Uh, Nigeria and South Africa are well ahead of other African countries who, though they have stronger regulatory environments, have insufficient economic opportunity to attract investors. Only South Africa has completed more public-private partnership infrastructure deals over the past 25 years than Nigeria. As evident in the graph, an estimated 28 billion American dollars investment in PPP projects have been attracted from the World Bank over a 20 year period, that is from 1990 to 2019. While Nigeria has estimated 20, 12 billion US dollars, and in comparison to Egypt and Kenya, have secured 10 billion US dollars and another 4 billion US dollars, respectively, from the World Bank. Uh, construction contributes a very modest 4.08% to total real GDP of Nigeria. Infrastructure is very important to the economic growth of every nation, region, and continent. The construction industry has proven to be a notable channel for infrastructural and industrial development and plays an important role in the economy as the activities of the industry are vital to the achievement of national social economic development goals of providing shelter, infrastructure, employment and poverty alleviation due to its multiplier effect on other sectors. It has a massive potential to put a large number of unskilled, semi-skilled and skilled labor to work and to create assets which can be used as leverage or as a store of value. According to a report of the Nigerian Bureau of Statistics, the NBS, the non-oil sector contributed about 91% of the GDP in the first quarter of 2020 and construction in real terms contributed 4.08% to the nation's GDP. Uh, the next slide talks about the construction sector's contribution to GDP relative to other key emerging markets. As evident in the chart on this slide, Nigeria lags behind two of its BRIC peers at the MIT economies, that is Mexico, Indonesia, and Turkey. Uh, the federal government of Nigeria has created several agencies to coordinate public-private partnership related projects and facilitate investments. As part of the effort of the federal government to leapfrog investments in the country, certain agencies have been established. The Infrastructure Concession Regulatory Commission, ICRC. This is the apex agency responsible for accelerating responsible for accelerating investment in national infrastructure through private sector funding by assisting the federal government of Nigeria and its ministries, departments and agencies to implement and establish effective public-private partnerships. The Nigerian Sovereign Investment Authority, NSIA. The NSIA, through its Nigeria Infrastructure Fund, which focuses entirely on domestic investment, has deployed over 17% of its funds under management across healthcare, power, transport, housing, road, bridges, etc. In 2018, the NSIA invested the sum of uh, 260 million US dollars under the Presidential Infrastructure Development Fund, the PIDF, in Abuja Kano Road Rehabilitation, Lagos Ibado Expressway, Second Niger Bridge, 
and the Mambila Hydropower Station, amongst others. Uh, the Bureau of Public Enterprises, BPE. BPE is responsible for driving the federal government's privatization program, carrying out sector reforms and liberalization of the economy. Since its establishment, it has completed the privatization of several government-owned assets, notably 11 distribution power companies, a steel rolling company, that is the Just Steel Rolling Company, the Nigerian Mining Corporation, Nigerian Telecommunication Limited, NITEL. Uh, NITEL. Uh, then we have the Bureau of Public Procurement, BPP. The BPP was established to harmonize existing government policies and practices on public procurement to ensure probity, accountability, and transparency in the procurement process. Establish pricing standards and benchmarks. Ensure the application of fair, competitive, transparent, value for money standards and practices for the procurement and disposal of public assets. And then we have the Nigerian Investment Promotion Commission, NIPC, which was established to foster investments in Nigeria. The agency has championed a series of negotiations and discussions with various representatives of several countries. It also created the One Stop Investment Center to provide fast track and real time services to potential investors. Uh, slide nine, uh, slide nine. Uh, Nigeria has recently articulated a renewed philosophy towards international trade and investment. The federal government of Nigeria adopted a bilateral investment policy direction in, 20, in 2016 to promote investment based on a philosophy that we term as RIBS, that is responsible, inclusive, balanced and sustainable policy framework for promoting investments that meet the country's economic development objectives. The four pillars are fundamentally grounded to ensure investors commit to one, the responsibility of environmental provisions, comp compliance with international labor standards and human rights and corporate social responsibility. Two, an inclusive approach that both mobilizes investments and creates jobs. And three, the incorporation of the balance of rights and obligations between investors and the respective host state, and for the prioritization of sustainable development goals as stipulated in the 2030 United Nations agenda. Uh, the next slide is slide 10. Uh, the Presidential Enabling Business Environment Council, PEBEC, has completed some reforms with respect to construction permits. It is noteworthy to state that an enabling environment and investment, Nigeria was ranked among the top 10 performers in the area of doing business in 2019. Also in 2019, Nigeria moved up 15 places from 146 to 131st in the World Bank's Age of Doing Business Index as a result of the removal of several bottlenecks in government processes, such as reduced turnaround time and improved adoption of e services. At this point, I would like to highlight some of the reform with respect to construction permits being implemented by the Presidential Enabling Business Environment Council, PEBEC. Creation of an e-planning platform, a web-based portal for obtaining planning permits, which additionally allows for e-payments. Removal of infrastructure development charge, IDC, for warehouses in Lagos aimed at significantly in reducing the cost of warehouse construction in Lagos. Implementation of online payments and central billing system for all fees, thus eliminating the need to submit physical receipts in Lagos. Digitization of land titles in Kano State, the largest economy in Northern Nigeria, to assist applicants seeking information on any type of property transaction to independently have online access. Reduction in the amount of documentation and number of procedures involved in land registration and construction as a sworn affidavit is no longer required as part of the documentation. Timely securing of business names. Nigeria is committed to strategic partnership in the following areas. Nigeria offers investment opportunities in both high growth and underpenetrated markets across various sectors. These include one, rail. With relatively low rail network, 4,000 kilometers, to other key African markets like South Africa, which had 35,507 kilometers, 
and emerging economies like India, which project about 1.2 million kilometers. Two, telecommunication and ICT. Where a consumer market with inadequate broadband penetration is swelling growth for Nigeria's digital economy and its telecommunication sector, which has players who are amongst the most successful and profitable companies in Africa. Three, power. Where over 40% of the population have limited or no access to electricity. Recent development in the global renewable energy market is driving the proliferation of renewable energy startups, providing microgrid solutions to urban and rural parts of the country. Four, real estate. Where an estimated 700,000 housing units per annum is required to meet the growing demand for housing and a mortgage penetration rate of 0.6% of GDP provides an opportunity to stimulate demand. Five, roads. With approximately 30% of paved road systems to cater for logistics demand. And six, maritime. With estimated 38% navigable waterway and limited operational force. Ways in which investors and operators can partner with the Nigerian federal government on addressing infrastructure needs. In most emerging economies, public budgets and skills are insufficient by themselves to deliver the infrastructure projects needed to sustain economic and demographic growth. Among low and middle income countries, three of the four BRIC nations, Brazil, India, and China, but not Russia, have the greatest cumulative experience of public private partnership projects and most of the capital invested. Most countries in Asia and South America already have substantial private investment in infrastructure as well as substantial project development and execution experience. Overall, Sub-Saharan Africa has a very modest presence and level of experience in this area. Although there have been progress in recent years with private infrastructure investing in Nigeria and Africa, this is evident in various projects being proposed for execution under the concession and build operate transfer BOT model. For example, the Lekki Ekwe Road Toll concession in Nigeria, the proposed Lekki Deep Sea port currently being constructed, amongst others. In conclusion, once again, the need for quality infrastructure cannot be overemphasized, as evident in developed economies. Thus, this is at the front burner of the current administration due to its positive imp implications for economic growth. The construction industry has been identified as a notable channel to address the infrastructural needs of the country. In conclusion, Nigeria is committed to working closely with potential investors and other African markets in transforming the infrastructure in Nigeria and Africa as a whole. On this note, I must again say that I am most delighted to participate in this event. I want to extend my appreciation once again to the, organizer, for, to the organizers for the, for, the, for the platform to share Nigeria's infrastructure opportunities and plans. I thank you very much.